Hey guys, it's Omer from MMOs.com with another quick weekend news recap of all major MMO news and announcers of the weekend on December 25th, 2017. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope you guys are enjoying all your MMO Christmas events. Uh, this is episode number 127 of the recap, and the first bit of news this week comes from Pearl Abyss, the folks behind Black Desert Online. They just released a new combat trailer this week for their newest character, Lon, and while Lon isn't quite yet released on the Western version, I expect that we will see her in the next few months. Uh, she basically just came out in the South Korean version of the game. We do, however, have the Mystic class Awakening on January 3rd, 2018. Uh, since Video launch on Steam, the game's been on quite a tear. It still averages a bit over 11,000 players online at any given time, and that number is likely double that off Steam. 2018 will have a lot to look forward to in BDO as well, including that new class that just launched in South Korea, which you can see in the background right now. Uh, speaking of Class Awakenings, Terra from Blue Hole just launched Class Awakenings for the first time in the Korean version of Terra. Each of the game's seven classes will have anywhere between four to eight new skills upon awakening that work towards allowing more personalization for each class. The video seeing the background actually shows off some of those new Class Awakenings. While it's a pretty huge change, it's only available in the Korean version for the time being. It'll likely launch here in the West sometime in 2018, probably the first half of the year if I had to guess. This is actually only the first part of a four-part winter update that runs until February, which will also add new dungeons, battlefields, items, and more. And yes, Terra is still getting a continual stream of updates. And next up, some pretty big news regarding loot boxes and gotchas. Apple updated their App Store guidelines this week and introduced a new rule that requires games that offer loot boxes or similar mechanics to disclose the odds of receiving each item type to players before they purchase. That means games like Hearthstone Mobile, Fake Grand Order, Shadowverse, and pretty much any game with random packs or loot boxes will have to reveal from the start exactly what the odds are or the percentages are for each of the drops in the game, or at least each tier of drops, whether it's legendary, rare, and whatnot. And this policy comes shortly after the internet outrage over loot boxes in Star Wars Battlefront 2, Rift, and numerous other titles. I do want to give huge props to Apple for forcing transparency over the apps in their own store. Regardless of how you feel about loot boxes, more information, more transparency is always better for players. Uh, next up, Star Citizen released Alpha 3.00 to all backers this last week with patch notes available on their website. While it looks like they're making steady progress towards release, the game still seems uh, far from completion. The game has raised a whopping $174 million to date, and despite the long development cycle, they are inching towards release. I personally remain skeptical though, but, but it's always good to see them making progress. And while I'm a bit skeptical, it's worth covering still because Star Citizen is one of the most expensive video games ever developed already, and hopefully we'll see some kind of actual release uh, this year, but I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Up next, Aeon's latest update, Heart of Frost, set to launch on January 10th. As the name of the update implies, it'll be introducing new Frost-themed dungeons and maps. More specifically, the update adds Divine Fortress, Mirasha Sanctum, and the Frozen Monolith areas to the game. And remember, this launches on January 10th. And also on Aeon related news, the game actually just went free to play in South Korea. While it's been free to play in the West for some time, the Korean version of the game remained subscription based until just this last week, and they even announced a new balance update called ReFly, which is set to launch in Korea on January 17th, 2018, and it'll be launching in the West probably quite a few months after that. Uh, next up, MapleStory's latest character, the Illium, officially launched this last week, and you guys probably already knew that because I mentioned it was going to launch this week in last week's recap. So I'll keep it short, it's basically a new Magician class in the game, and the second class to be added in the Nova update. And while I haven't played the Illium yet, I do plan on making it. I'm currently playing my Kadena and Mercedes, but I'll probably level up by uh, Illium next. And despite its age, MapleStory is a game I still go back to every now and then because I find it a lot of fun. Up next, some pretty big news from PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. The extremely popular Battle Royale game just launched its 1.0 update on Steam this last week, which marks the game's official launch out of early access into full release. And 1.0 has a ton of changes, but most notably it includes massive optimizations, the brand new desert map based off Mexico, and UI tweaks, and much more. PUBG remains extremely popular and continues to break new concurrent records each and every month. The game hit nearly 3 million concurrent players earlier this month, and with the launch of 1.0, I suspect it'll be hitting well above 3 million in the near future. I personally took a big break from the game, but I returned with the 1.0 update, and the optimizations are huge. The game runs so much better, and I've been having a lot of fun playing it. I'm mean, right along, we have a bit of mobile game news, and it's actually a big one. Arena of Valor from Tencent Games just launched this last week in North America for both Android and iOS. I say it's big because Arena of Valor is actually already the biggest video game in the world, thanks to its absurd popularity in China. According to Bloomberg, the game is earning upwards of $435 million every month, and has nearly 100 million daily active players. Now, $435 million is a lot of money. Put that into context, League of Legends is the most popular PC game in the world, and only makes about $1.8 billion a year. So this game is making quite a bit more than that, both on revenue, and it has a higher player base. I've actually been playing this one a bit on my own for fun, and it is a surprisingly good game. It delivers a full mobile-like experience on mobile, and it's buttery smooth and has no pay-to-win and no autoplay nonsense. I say this one's actually well worth trying. 
Uh, next up, some interesting bit of news for World of Warcraft fans. The game's latest 7.3.5 patch on the game's PTR was just released, and folks over at WoW had already data mined information about the requirements for unlocking the new allied races, the High Mountain Tauren, Nightborn, Void Elves, and Lightforge Draene, which are included in the upcoming Battle for Azeroth expansion, which has no release date just yet. But unlocking these races basically requires the exalted ranks with each of their appropriate factions, and that's about it. But you also obviously need to own the expansion, as well as having at least one character at level 110. And if I had to bet, I would bet that Battle for Azeroth is launching sometime in the summer of 2018. And next up, the anime action MRPG Closers launched the open beta this last week and is available to everyone to play for free. Since going free to play, the game's current player base has jumped on Steam from 100 players online to over 1,500 on average. It's a pretty huge jump, but it shouldn't be too surprising because the game's closed beta was buy to play and now the game is actually free to play to everyone. I'm personally not a fan of the buy to play early access, free to play launch pricing, but unfortunately this time around the game was buy to play for only about a month before it went free to play. The game isn't bad either, but it doesn't really offer too much different from other instance dungeons, persistent hub action and more RPGs. Um, next, some pretty crazy news from the folks over at Rising Thunder, the PC fighting game developed by Radiant Entertainment. So Rising Thunder actually shut down after Riot Games purchased the company back in 2016, and this week they announced that they're releasing an open source version of the game, a community version of the game called Rising Thunder Community Edition in January 2018. Now this is actually pretty interesting because rarely do you ever see a company basically open source their code and help the community create this free version of their dead game. It's a really awesome move from Radiant Entertainment slash Riot Games, and it's something I'd love to see other dead games do in the future, but it's probably never going to happen. And interesting enough, they actually also hinted that they'll be announcing a new game in the near future when it's ready, and that would be a Riot Games title, so maybe Riot Games can finally earn the S in the name Riot Games. Uh, next up, a bit of odd news, also Riot Games related. Besides the title being worked on by the Radiant Entertainment guys that Riot bought last year, or perhaps this is the game they're actually working on, but a new PC title has been revealed by Riot in a Chinese regulatory filing, and the new game is called Timo's Adventure and it'll be on the PC. And uh, basically what happened was Riot Games in China got approval from the Chinese government to release a PC game called Timo's Adventure, and that's literally all we know. It hasn't been formally revealed or announced just yet, so we don't know what it's going to be, but we'll hopefully find out in the near future. Uh, next up, a bit of industry news for Funcom, the Norwegian game company behind Age of Conan, Sigur World Legends, and numerous other games. So Funcom raised $10 million this last week in funding and actually secured rights to 29 new intellectual properties to potentially develop new games for. It's good news for the industry because Funcom's got more money and Funcom might make some more MMOs out of it. But right now, all we know is the fundraising and hopefully we'll hear some new game announcements uh, in 2018. Up next, World of Tanks is launching its 1.0 update in March of 2018, so PUBG is not the only game to officially launch. Well, this one's not quite out yet, but it's going to be launching real soon, and the 1.0 update improves the game's optimizations, improves graphics, and does a lot of other tweaks to the game. World of Tanks is already a pretty beautiful game, but it's only going to get better. And while we don't talk too much about World of Tanks, the game is immensely popular. It's easily one of the most popular free-to-play games in the world and it continues to do quite well. But yeah, the 1.0 update is launching in March of 2018. And expect new maps, new tanks, and other goodies. Next and last bit of news this week comes from Final Fantasy XIV, and the news is that they launched a, a mini site for patch 4.2, which kind of highlights all the upcoming changes, and you can view that all in one place on the new 4.2 mini site. And top of that, they re-enabled house demolition, so anyone that hasn't logged into the game in like 30 plus days will have their house basically disappearing from the game world for other players to grab it as well. The 4.2 update itself is a giant update, so if you play Final Fantasy XIV, definitely check out that mini site because there's new main story quests, a new tier of uh, dungeons, new tier of raids, and, and tons of other goodies. Anyway guys, that's it for MO News this week, and I hope everyone had an awesome Christmas. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the podcast. Later, guys.